welcome to Talking Point. Now, this week we are talking dirty, or rather about dirty toilets. Now, in a recent survey conducted by the Restroom Association, most people rated the standard of public toilets here to be normal. But for the third year running, coffee shop toilets topped the list of dirtiest loos in Singapore. In fact, the Environment Ministry set up the Public Hygiene Council to try and flush out the dirty habits of Singaporeans. Just why are our public toilets, especially those in food centres and coffee shops in the heartlands, so dirty? And how can we inculcate better public hygiene practices among our people, which in turn would go towards building greater social graciousness? To discuss that, we have in studio the chairman of the newly set up Public Hygiene Council, Mr. Liap Teng Te Te Lit, fellow council member and sociologist at the National University of Singapore, Associate Professor Pauline Strong, President of the Restroom Association, Ms. Tan Pui Hun. She's also on the Public Hygiene Council and the founder of the World Toilet Organization, or the other WTO, Mr. Jack Sim. So welcome all. Um, first, let's ask the question, where, where is the problem? What is the problem? Is it a matter of public hygiene, uh, a lack of civic consciousness, or Singaporeans are just born dirty people? I think that we don't have a vision of the coffee shop and the hawker centre toilet like the Changi Airport. You have to start with wanting it to look like that and then you, with the vision you will work everything towards it. There are multi-stakeholders. There's the owner of the coffee shop who for convenience sake would prefer it to be dirty because then less people will use it then they don't have to spend so much money cleaning it up and supplying it. Mm -hmm. There's also the Clean, uh, the cleaner who is not trained, there is the diner who doesn't use the toilet but he didn't know that the cook is actually using the toilet and if he don't wash his hands he's going to give you some of those to eat. You know? mm -hmm. So we need to motivate all of them together. But does that really point to the root of the problem? I mean if a toilet were to be in a certain condition, say, anyone who goes into it, if the person doesn't make it dirtier, it remains at a, in a certain state and most toilets start off in the morning, first thing in the morning, usually quite clean. Pauline? I think that at the end of the day, it is about transforming how Singaporeans view shared public places. I believe most of us live in homes where our toilets are pretty clean. So how do we encourage Singaporeans to broaden ownership beyond their private property and take charge of their public space? So it, it includes beyond just being clean yourself, it includes standing up to tell someone off. If they come out of the loo and they didn't flush, they say, hey ma'am, you didn't flush, you know, you got to flush, right? So, so to you, it's a matter of ownership. Yes. Where well, do you see the root of the problem some people, you know, is uh, always think that someone will clean up the mess for them. So, uh, and this is someone else's job. It's not just my responsibility. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we just see um, um, this happening. So, so it sounds like, again, what you're saying also is the same thing. Ownership yeah. of any space you have, uh, even if it's a public place, uh, it should be, you should feel an ownership to that. Now, do you agree with, with what's been said so far? What do you want to add to that? I, I think let's put things in perspective. Mm -hmm. Not everything is terrible, terrible. Not everything is wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. I think we have a full spectrum. All right. There are some coffee shop toilets that are quite decent. Mm -hmm. Although I would say the majority are not great. And if you look at people, the average user of the toilet, the public, I think probably about 60-70% of the people, they are actually quite considerate. Mm -hmm. They don't mess up things. All right? Then there is a group of people, maybe 30% or so, who would be rather careless, you know, and then they will occasionally dirty the place. Mm -hmm. And then probably there will be a small group of people who I call the hardcore. All right? They are totally inconsiderate. Mm -hmm. They will make a mess of it for everyone. And I think the, the problem arises when we allow that, that hardcore group of people and the careless people to tip things over to a certain point and then the whole place become a mess and then the people who normally don't dirty the toilet stop going to the toilet. They okay. say, look, that's not for me, I won't go in there. All right. So I think if we, we put things in perspective, it is not extremely bad, not all extremely good. And people too, I think you have different types of people. And I agree totally with Pauline that the group of people who don't normally dirty the toilet uh, ought to show their disapproval when they see people messing up. Mm. So that the social norm is such that when you go and use a toilet, mm -hmm. you do have to think of the next person coming in. Mm. Restroom Association, I um, understand mm. recently a survey was done. Could you very quickly tell us the key finding? Um, generally, I think our public have seen that uh, the cleanliness standard in Singapore and the public toilet has uh, getting better. 
But uh, always top on the list is always our coffee shop toilets and market hawker centre toilets. So these are the, the, the key findings that we have. So I there. know some people may be offended by perhaps the suspected um, implication of this question, but why in particular do you think coffee shop toilets in a heartlands tend to be dirtier? Would it be the users, the kind of users? Or is it because people think, oh, this is the heartland, uh, mm. it's a neighbourhood coffee shop, I don't have to bother again. I think. And when they go uh, to posh place, they tend to take a better care. Uh, basically, what our observation is, uh, a lot, some of our uh, coffee shop owner, uh, they don't think it's their responsibility. Uh, and uh, for us, we just see that if one the public toilets uh, to be clean, the toilet owner need to be able to provide uh, good design toilets with all the amenity in place. And then the cleaner play a very important part as well. It has to be the trained cleaners and know how to clean the toilets, you know, uh, in 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 the right way. And of course, the end of the, the, the last portion of people is the user. How the user, how is the considerate user and use it with care? But in terms of accountability, how would you rank them? Because we've talked about owners of, of these establishments, we've talked about cleaners, we've also talked about users. But in terms of accountability, let's rank them. Who's the most accountable for the state of our toilets? Who would you say? Who would you blame? Let's play the blame game here. <laughs> Don't blame anyone. <laughs> I think Jack? that uh, we have to look for an answer and really solve the problem. We have to also be very scientific. If, for example, you see something, each incident is different from another. If you see a long toilet paper on the floor, it could be that the toilet roll roll very fast. Once they pull, it roll down and it lit on the mm -hmm. floor. It could be that if you see a piece of toilet, uh, the tissue paper on the urinal, it could be because there was no dustbin next to it and the uh, person who has to... I understand. But what I'm trying to do is to mm. generally try and find who mm. might be the biggest um, segment that we should be working on first, the more urgent. So who? I, I think, think the owner. I would think the owner yeah. will be the key. Because you have to set too. the premise yes. right. You have to provide the public with a clean toilet that's functional. Mm. And then learned behavior follows. Okay, I know um, all <laughs> over that side thing is the owner. Liak, you, you I, haven't really expressed it. Both? You take two Ooh. hands to clap. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I used to manage the old Alexandra Hospital. We used to have a public toilet, which was very, very busy toilet. All right. And it was a real mess. And one of the first things we did was we decided to go to the zoo and learn from Baron Harrison how to design a proper toilet. Mm -hmm. And here we was, we had this very busy toilet, used to be very dirty. We turned it into what we call a zoo toilet. <laughs> and almost overnight, mm. the behavior of the people improved. Mm. Because when people go into a nicer place, they, they, they sort of take a mm. pause and they say, I won't mess it up. Mm. But having said that, the public all right, do need to be reminded again and again. Mm. Well, uh, we'll we talk about how we can remind the public over and over again um, after the break. But it's ironic, don't you think, we have to go to a place for animals to learn how to <laughs> get humans to behave better. When we come back, um, we'll discuss whose responsibility is it to keep our public toilets clean. Is it the operators? I think we've decided it's operators. But how? How do we get users to also play their part? Stay with us. Again, we're discussing why our public toilets, especially those at hawker centres and coffee shops, are so dirty. Now, before the break, we discussed it, and um, it seems that most of you feel that um, operators need to take a huge load of the responsibility, but users too have to be responsible. So, in a sense, so far we've been looking mostly at operators. But what about users? Do you think that the public, anyone who's not using the toilet properly, should be fined? Can we do a poll? Who wants to fine individuals? No? It's very difficult to, to catch someone doing the, not doing the right things and then find them in the toilets. It's very difficult. It's not possible. And especially it's in, within a cube, because nobody sees what's going on in there. You know? And if, she, if the, when you open the door, there's something on the floor, and the person can tell you, I didn't do that. Someone else, the, the, mm -hmm. the, the other user is doing it. Maybe, maybe I, will, I will say yes for the hard call. If you catch them, doing very obviously wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should find them. Well, a lot of things can't be caught because it's behind closed doors. So uh, <laughs> that, that presents a slight problem uh, there. In the, the men's side, uh, we have the urinal which is out in the open. Remember <laughs> that there was a time where we find people for not flushing for $500? And we cannot catch anybody because nobody will be willing to take that job <laughs> of standing outside doors and when you go, you say, hang on, let me check. Mm. Come on, it's unenforceable. So mm -hmm. what Correct. we really need to understand is that 
environment breeds behavior, good environment breeds good okay. behavior. Okay. And we have to have the vision of a really good toilet and work towards it. And we have to motivate either by enforcement of the owner, don't supply soap, uh, paper, mm -hmm. all these things we have to take action. Should, who should police these operators and, and the toilets that they that are under their care? The NEA is supposed to be the enforcement. Of, supposed to be? Yes. But, but, but they don't. Mm -hmm. You don't think they're doing enough? Sure. Otherwise, in, in Korea, when you are caught three times, they close down your uh, shop for a week. Mm -hmm. And then because of that, everybody just don't want to be closed down for a week mm -hmm. because then their tenant will be scolding the owner. And when the owner gets to a penalty mm -hmm. uh, from his tenant, then everything works. You see, right now, people think, oh, I don't visit the toilet because, you know, the food is delicious here. But we ask them, which toilet does the cook go to? If there's no soap, no paper, and he's an anal washer, his fingers will go to the food and you'll eat it. Mm. This okay, is and you no could, good. You and could in, chronically ill. Chronically and in Gelang Serai, somebody actually died because the Indian Roja mm. has uh, feces on the chopping board. Mm. And there was one abortion and more than a hundred uh, food yes, poisoning. And, and we cannot conveniently forget about this kind of incident. Is, is, is that the kind of practice, you think, shutting down a toilet that maybe for a number of times, after a number of warnings, um, mm. uh, does not improve on the standards of hygiene, that it should be shut down. Do you think that's applicable here? Can we, can we do that here? Should, should so. that be done here? I think so. Mm. Good. Mm. I think so. I think uh, nowadays, uh, any obviously they do now to do a check with, at, at the coffee shops. Mm. And it could be because the, the frequency might not be the, mm. uh, frequent enough, no? mm. but, but they do do a Maybe we shouldn't check. just rely on NEA because mm. NEA is only one agency. right? We don't want to be spending so much public money on just hiring people and who are enforcing. Mm. Perhaps this is where the public needs to play our mm. role. So if you go to a toilet and it is insufficiently stocked, Give us a number to call and we will call and report. Mm -hmm. So NEA doesn't mm -hmm. have to make cold calls, right? They'll mm -hmm. go down there and do a spot check and then mail them. Well, currently we have that certification system. I think that two, is it Singapore OK? And what's the other one? Um, Happy Toilet. Happy oh, Toilet. Okay. Would that be confusing for people, you think? Uh, yes, uh, but now I think NEA have decided to, to take down the Singapore OK, uh, okay. Uh, Toilet OK, and then uh, going to work with RAS to promote the Happy Toilet. So that's only one certification program. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But what are the consequences, say, if you don't get that sticker? And, and, and what's the difference between, I don't know, three, four, five stars? How, how does it work? Um, it's a, today it's not a compulsory, mm -hmm. it's still voluntary that it's only the toilet owner thing is, is good, then they participate in this program. So the question is, should it be made compulsory? Just like in hawker centres, the cleanliness of a store, um, A, B, C, or even D, and maybe if you, if you get D uh, consistently, you should be shut down. I think that if you want to enforce and there's a law, you should go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. Because it, unlike littering, littering mm -hmm. is such a big space. Toilet is a very fixed place. You go there, whether there's soap, there's paper, you know it. And the state of repair, if it's very, it's this broken mirror theory. When it is bad, then the behavior is not going to be very good. So when we don't have this vision, we think, oh, coffee shop toilet, of course, it has to be dirty. Hawker centre toilet, it has to be dirty. Then it's self-fulfilling. You know? But the problem is, see, there are no real consequences for the proprietors. Absolutely. So what if I have a dirty mm. toilet? So mm. what if I don't get your three stars or your sticker, mm. whatever? As long as Singaporeans continue to say, doesn't matter, D also eat as long as the food is good. Mm. Now, we are doing ourselves in. So here is where public ownership involves that. Beyond becoming a busybody and telling people off, we also have to take a stick. Mm. If that guy, if that coffee shop has a dirty toilet, well, don't. Don't patronise it. Mm. Yes. Let them mm. feel it through the purses. Mm. Then they will do mm. something. But, but this behaviour of if you go to a dirty toilet and you think, okay, if it's already dirty, I will dirty it anyway as well. Shouldn't we nip that in the bud as well? It's not just about toilets, it's about maybe any public spaces. Mm. I don't think that a person intentionally wants to dirty a toilet. A person normally wants to behave in a convenient way. Mm -hmm. So if the convenient way is to... Uh, flick the water on the floor because there was no facilitation for hand drying, then the floor will be wet. If the convenient way is to take a piece of uh, 
napkin and clean your hand and drop it. They'll prefer that. So you must design ergonomically everything conveniently so that their behavior is facilitated. That, that, I, I agree with you on, on that point, but at the same time, though, um, you know, sh the, the right behavior, in a sense, in, in public places, in shared spaces, ought to be that even if it's inconvenient to you, but because you know that your behavior might inconvenience somebody else, you don't have, you don't act out that behavior anyway. Mm -hmm. See, so how, how do we try and change behavior at the root rather than because of the environment, this, you know, uh, other factors? We'll examine that after the break. Let's just go for a quick break. We'll think about that. Uh, we'll continue to discuss how to build a greater civic consciousness among Singaporeans after the break on Talking Point. Welcome back to Talking Point. We're discussing how we can inculcate better civic mindedness in our people and hopefully that this would translate into better public hygiene standards. Now, the Environment Minister, Dr. Balakrishnan, set some targets at the launch of the Public Hygiene Council. He said, we need to reach the standard of Japan or Northern Europe or Korea and we must not settle for less. Uh, before we talk a bit more about that and how to go about doing that, Leak, you wanted to respond to uh, Jack's comment. Mm, well, I, I'm, I'm not too sure I, I can completely agree with Jack that uh, everybody is trying to do their best and it's unfortunate that they can't do their best and therefore they're little. I think at the end of the day, there is a certain number of people that need to be a little bit more considerate to the next person that's going to use the toilet. Mm -hmm. And it's when you are inconsiderate that out of your own convenience, you just leave it a mess for the next person. And I think that kind of behavior needs to stop. Mm -hmm. So for the majority of the people who are considerate, I think they ought to also demand that the other people be considerate too. So that combined together as a society, we get it right. But uh, I do firmly believe that there is actually a sizable number of people who are not considerate enough. Mm. There are some people who say that, look, you know, talking about, why are you talking about toilets? You know, so specific and only one thing. But do you, do you agree that, you know, this consideration in terms of public toilet use, if you take a step back, you can infer that into other sort of behaviours? Pauline? Indeed. I mean, this is... Social grace is a generalized basket of goods, right? It's not just toilets, it is whether you litter, whether or not, you know, you give up your seat on the bus, whether or not you, you know, behave in a civilized manner in a public space. So this is generalized social behavior and we need to we need to learn to do it well because we live in such a densely populated city. If not, we're all going to like have mental illness, you know. So where do we start? How do we start? I think we can be very scientific about it. <laughs> Basically, each behavior has a motivation incentives behind it. We have been scolding the user for the last 30 years and blaming the user all the time and we are not getting any results. Why should we continue to do the same thing? Einstein explained that insanity is defined as doing the same thing and expecting a different result. No, we have to get to the root cause of why each incident happen and facilitate it and design solution around it. It could be user behavior, it could be cleaners, it could be owners not supplying it, mm -hmm. it could be an environment that create that kind of feeling. So maybe some idea about where we can start. Do we start at schools? You know, what is it about perhaps, let's just say, a lot of people cite Japan as being very, very clean mm. um, without campaigns, without posters, without slogans, you know, but yet they are so clean. How, how do we get that kind of so-called automatic behavior? In well, Japan, Definitely, uh, education is important, and you should inculcate all those things from young. You know, uh, then, but uh, that, that's how if in, when it comes to, to family, you know, uh, the parents can, can be the role model for their kids. And that's one uh, generation after generation that, that this, all the good habits can, can pass it down. So, so who's going to pass the good habit to the parents who may not have yeah. <laughs> the good habits? But I think one thing I, I notice when mm. I go to Japan or Seoul, right, mm. is the professionalization of the cleaning industry, mm. right? When you see the cleaners in, like usually we're at airports and, you know, hotels and maybe the shopping malls, they take such great pride in their jobs, Absolutely. you know, they are dressed mm. well Absolutely. and, you know, they clean with their hands, but that, that's because, you know, they have gloves, they have all the equipment. Yes. So, so how can that translate for the user to also be, you know, uh, the tip-top hygiene sort of behavior? You have to pay the cleaner more 
and you have to respect the cleaner and train it professionally because today you so, get cleaners who are so just splashing water. So you think that better cleaners would translate into better users, Leo? Again, your... again, I think we are jumping around quite a fair bit. Yeah. We, we are first talking about where do we start. I, I, I personally think that you start with us, mm -hmm. each individual single person. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, how we behave ourselves and then how we impart that to our children. Mm -hmm. all right? And how do we advocate for what we believe? Mm -hmm. uh, frankly, this morning, uh, I was just outside my hospital and somebody threw the cigarette butt on the floor. I basically just went up to him and I said, excuse me, I think you drop it. And he was a little bit embarrassed mm -hmm. and I, I, I sort of watched him and I expected him to pick it up. He did, all right? Mm -hmm. He did. Um, maybe because I'm rather big size, so he didn't want to fight with me. But mm -hmm. I, I, didn't, I didn't accuse him of anything. I just said, mm -hmm. I think you dropped it. I think maybe you should pick it up. Mm -hmm. So my, my argument that if every one of us, we do the right thing, mm -hmm. but we also insist that other people behave in the right way, then I think combined together, we will have a society that we want. Well, I think at this point, it seems timely for me to mention a quote from uh, the minister, um, the environment minister as well. He is in favour too of this peer pressure that you've spoken about. He said, I need to make it so easy to apply peer pressure and for people to invoke enforcement actions that ultimately we will have 3.2 million NEA officers almost. So on that note, thank you all very much for coming onto the show to talk about this topic. Um, now, there's no easy way to effect a change in social behavior, especially something as intangible as civic consciousness. But unfortunately, the lack of it manifests itself in very tangible outcomes like filthy public toilets. Now, to do that is not just the cleaners, but everyone's job to play their part. So the clean and green reputation we've built up over the decades does not get flushed out. That's all the time we have for this week's topic. This has been Talking Point.